Well, if you're anything like me, opening a service like that produces at least three different types of feelings. The one is simply a feeling of enthusiasm and gratitude for beholding the wonders of what God has made and the gift of being able to participate in the wonders of his creation. Maybe it produces that related feeling then that makes us want to go outside and see and experience the wonders of all that God has made. Or if we're limited in our ability to go outside, maybe it prompts us to, to look at some pictures of majestic scenes in creation or to, to watch something on the travel channel that helps us appreciate, again, something of the, the vastness of all that God has made. That's one feeling, a, a feeling of enthusiasm and gratitude. Second feeling, though, might be a feeling of remorse, uh, regret, contrition. For the reality is that while we have received this good gift, uh, the biblical narrative reminds us that we are those uh, as sinners who have well, we've marred that good gift. Uh, we've, we've wrecked it. We've damaged it. We've, we've worked in different ways, subtly, sometimes intentionally, to, to damage that good gift. And being reminded of our, of our reception of it uh, prompts us to acknowledge that again before God. And the third feeling that we'll get to a little bit later is a feeling of longing. A longing that stems from the sense that there's something of the goodness of creation that holds even in the midst of, of uh, all that we struggle with. And, and we enjoy that, but we're aware of the realities that work against it. Uh, realities marked by suffering and sorrow, pain, displeasure. And so we long for the fullness of what God intended from the very beginning. So enthusiasm, remorse, and longing. We'll deal with the enthusiasm part later today, perhaps, as you conclude the service and have a chance to participate, perhaps, in an activity outside. Let's pause now, though, and acknowledge before God our remorse for the ways that we have proven to be poor stewards of his very good creation. Would you join me in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we do marvel at you, you, the creator, you who have spoken into being all that is and all of its splendor and all of its wonder and all of its majesty. Oh God, we do truly take delight in the work of your hands and we give you praise as the sovereign creator. We also recognize the privileged place you've given to us as human beings, called to, to live in your image, to, to act as stewards of your creation, to be caretakers of it, to bring about its potential possibilities, caring for one another in all that you have made. And as we behold the splendor of what you have made, we, we acknowledge that too often we've simply made a mess of things. We've felt entitled for the gift of creation, and instead of giving thanks, we've, we've sought to make it our own. We, we haven't lived in awe enough of who you are and of the work of your hands. Uh, we've tried to make it f serve our needs, our gains. We've exploited it in too many ways. We've, we've been careless in polluting it. We've extended hospitality minimally at times. We've overlooked the needs of creatures, of plants, of environments. And sometimes, rather than promoting peace and harmony within the human community, we have participated in inciting division, hostilities. We've neglected care for neighbors around us. All of that fills us with a sense of, of remorse and we simply wish to acknowledge that before you again, uh, to come clean, to be honest, so that we might be renewed again by your Spirit, so that we might be open again, freshly, to your will for us, to the good work you are doing in us, to fashion us evermore in the image of Jesus Christ, the true human being, so that we might truly love you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, Love our neighbors as ourselves and care for all that you have made. So hear our prayers again, O God. Meet us through your grace and mercy. Continue to empower us by your Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Having offered a prayer like that, we do well to call to mind the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, where he acknowledges the vast realities of human sin and yet comes to the point of saying that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We marvel at the way the biblical narrative unfolds, beginning in a garden of wonder and delight where all is well, and yet soon finding Adam and Eve banished from the garden. They are not allowed back in, and yet ever after God pursuing them, God pursuing humanity, so that there might be reconciliation, so that there might be a renewing of the human being gathered into this new community now in Jesus Christ. And we stand in awe at the fact that God would take on flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, standing in our place, bearing our penalty of condemnation so that we might be welcomed back in. Thanks be to God. And it's because of that that we take note of the goodness that we enjoy now, giving thanks and praise to God and begin to feel that longing renewed for, for the fullness of God's intentions for creation. And so if we carry on and Romans 8, we find that that longing is fully legitimate. For Paul speaks of creation groaning, but eagerly anticipating the day when it is set free completely from all of its frustrations. And he says how we share in that groaning. We have a sense for, for what is yet to come. We have the sense of knowing that having received the Holy Spirit, it's the first fruits of the fullness of life in communion with God, and there is much more to come. And so Paul says we hope for this. This is the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. We live with this holy longing. And Paul says that as long as we are waiting, we can wait patiently. Because we know who God is and what God has already done and what God has promised to do yet in the future. A future that cannot be stopped or thwarted by any force opposed to God. So we live with that longing we seek to cultivate that longing, and in the present, we seek to do the will of God, living as the human beings that we were created to be. We're going to explore this a bit later in the service, but now we simply acknowledge these realities, our enthusiasm, our remorse, our gratitude at receiving forgiveness, and our longing for what God will yet do. Thanks be to God.